Hello, welcome. We're so glad that you could join us today. Um, we're going to go around the room and introduce ourselves. So spend a, a brief hour with you all to talk about the Higher Ed Leadership Program at Texas Christian University. And so uh, to kick us off, Ben will introduce himself. Hey everyone, uh, my name is Ben Grapperhaus. I am a first year uh, student in the Higher Education Leadership Program. Um, my assistantship is a hall director with Fraternity Story Life, and then I also work within the Fraternity Story Life office. Hi everyone, my name is Lana Whitlock. I am a second year graduate student here at TCU. Um, I currently serve in a split position between FSL Housing, so I'm a graduate hall director, and I also work in our wellness office. So definitely love it, um, and I'm really excited that y'all are here. So I'm Stephen Domney. I serve as the Associate Director of Fraternity and Sorority Life. And how I got involved in this is I also serve as the division's graduate recruiter for the Higher Ed Leadership Program. So I coordinate the graduate student recruitment experience for candidates and our team. So I look forward to ch talking with you, engaging with you over the next few weeks, not just today. Hey y'all, I'm Rachel Haley. I'm a full-time graduate assistant with Student Development Services. I work primarily with the Leadership Center and First Year Experience programs as well as some social justice programs in the division. Hi, I'm Stephen McNamara. I'm a second year grad and I work in the central office of Housing and Residence Life, uh, which is now going to be the student leadership position within Housing and Residence Life. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I guess that. I'm Alex. I'm the one that's been emailing you. I am a split graduate assistant um, and I work within Fraternity and Sorority Life Housing as a hall director and within our Housing and Residence Life office under the, oh, I can't speak today, under the assessment uh, GA position. So if you have any questions about that, I can be a resource for you there. So uh, I'll start actually. Um, what we're first going to talk about is our um, OPE candidates. And if you're interested in OPE, um, you will probably be meeting me. I'm going to the Oshkosh Place and Exchange um, next month. So that's really exciting. Um, I was recruited there actually. So I went to the University of Northern Iowa, did not have any experience in housing, met TCU there, um, and fell in love with the position. So a couple of logistic things, if you haven't already set up your interview and sent your preferences and also just, um, you know, worked with myself or Markel on that, um, definitely get on that. We highly recommend that um, you do that so you can get a great interview time slot. We are conducting first and second round interviews there. So um, a lot of you have probably already signed up for first rounds, but um, each interview will be 30 minutes long. Um, we'll just get to know you in the first interview and then in the second round, a little bit more in depth about the positions and what you're looking for in an assistantship. Um, we also have two socials that we'll be attending. Um, we're doing a social on Friday night, so definitely keep that open if you're interested. Um, we'll have a lot of TCU kind of um, you'll, you'll see meet our whole staff that's going. There's about eight or nine of us, um, three grads, and then the rest are professional staff um, that are recruiting for a numerous amount of positions. We have about 15 open. Um, and then we'll be at the large social on Saturday. Um, highly recommend going to both. We want to get to know you as a person um, and also kind of understand who you are outside of the interview. So if that's something you have a question with, um, let me know. We'll be sending out uh, kind of the details of the social in the next couple weeks. Once we get that finalized, we will be serving food and all of those things and then doing a student panel at that. Um, and then after that, if you are asked to come to campus, this is not a requirement for the Oshkosh Placement Exchange, but we highly recommend it. Um, we are meeting with you in Wisconsin, um, but we want you to come see campus. And so if you were to proceed to that point, um, that is in mid-March, so the 15th through the 17th. And so if you're thinking about that, if you want to come to campus, um, just let us know and we can get something going for you. But um, that typically is kind of our on-campus invite. Um, lastly, we just look forward to getting to know you like intimately and knowing a little bit more about you as a person. So um, in the meantime, if you have questions, I'm kind of the person that you'll go to or Markel if you've been talking to him. But yes please let us know and then Stephen will be there as well. So talk a little bit about visiting days. So this is our inaugural year of utilizing visiting days. Um, this is an opportunity for you to not only meet faculty, staff, the current graduate students, 
and come visit campus all in one. So how that will work is March 15th through the 17th. So we'll kick off around five o'clock on the 15th. Um, we'll have a logistics team of Ben and we have another graduate student, Kara, who are kind of our logistics gurus. They will help you with ha making sure of when you will arrive, where you will be staying. If you have need a hotel room, TCU is covering the cost of your hotel room. Um, we have rooms reserved at a specific hotel, so we'll work in navigating that for you all. Um, and from there, um, we will also schedule your interviews. Um, we'll, we'll talk a little bit, bit more about that further in a minute, but from five to seven on Sunday night, we will uh, welcome you to campus uh, in our DJ Kelly Alumni Center. You'll mingle with, with some faculty, staff, students, uh, graduate students, and there may be some undergraduates there. Um, depending on the programs that you're working with, um, we're trying to work to navigate having undergraduates there, although that is the tail end of spring break for us. Uh, we are doing our best to make sure that um, we can let you engage with our students too. Uh, from there on Monday, it's a full day. Um, you'll get started early in the morning with a quick breakfast and student activities and then head on to interviews in our um, Brown Lumpton University Union uh, and that we will go for to about three o'clock um, and then we'll, we'll break for lunch. So you'll get to uh, fellowship in our Market Square uh, dining facility and then we'll have a quick panel with our graduate students to talk about experiences there. Um, and then from there, um, we'll continue interviews, they will wrap up, do a campus tour, and then you'll go to a makeshift class. Um, we recognize that class could be a lot for some people, so we have an abbreviated course that we are doing that night just to get a feel for the faculty uh, and what it's like to go to class. Um, from there, you'll have a social in the heart of Fort Worth. Um, so you mingle with graduate students, the faculty and staff and undergraduate students are out of the picture. So uh, kind of relax and then we'll wrap up on Tuesday with any remaining interviews, um, touch base, and then we'll wrap up and go from there. Um, our timeline is pretty um, strict um, so that we wrap up on the 17th. Um, all the hiring managers meet on the 18th to make decisions about hiring decisions and then offer letters for the academic program and assistantship come in the same email um, and they will be offered on the 20th. So we are pretty quick in that regard. Uh, please note that there will be a deadline for the assistantship offer in your letter. Um, for the academic program, the mandate is not required till April 15th as our relationship with other graduate preparatory programs. Uh, but do note that on the assistantship side, we will have a deadline uh, for notification of acceptance so that we can know to confirm you and get, re get you ready for the fall term or um, if you choose to decline and go somewhere else, how to prepare for looking at the next steps for TCU. Just to kind of give a glimpse to that. I think one last thing I want to mention is um, whether you decide to come to TCU through the route of OPE, which is a great route, or another route, um, you know, if you found us through Facebook or our website or just in general, there's a few of us who did both. Myself, I went to OPE, Stephen went to OPE, and so did Ben. And so um, it's definitely successful, but Rachel, um, I would love to kind of hear like what your route was if you wanted to like, sure. go through that. Cool. Yeah, um, I went about it um, through kind of learning through peers um, that were actually in the program previously and inquiring probably similar to you all um, through the website and through faculty um, and set up and applied um, and given my preferences, got to do some phone interviews and then did a Skype interview with um, what became my um, employer for my assistantship. And so um, although it was a different route than maybe others, and I didn't come to campus, um, I really trusted the individuals I was speaking with and trusted the merit of the program. Um, and being here, I can say that it's been a great decision for me and I've really valued um, the transparency and authenticity of the program from its kind of inertia. So if you're unable to do either of those options, please know that there's ways to connect and also learn more about different aspects of the program, maybe that you couldn't get if you weren't um, on site or here on campus. So feel free to connect with us in those ways too. 
to talk a little bit about the assistantships, I kind of wanted to do a quick rundown because I recognize that you may go to our website and see the positions and be like, so Stephen, what does this mean in layman's terms? So uh, the easiest way to do a quick rundown of those things. So roughly we have about 15 positions. Um, and there's one that's still pending, so that's why I say roughly 15. Uh, but there's 14 that I know of off the top of my head, so I'm going to run down those with you all. Um, we have two FSL only positions, meaning that you would work in the Office of Attorney and Story Life and serving as a hall director. One of those positions is advising the Inter Attorney Council in working with leadership development programs. The other is working with the Penalinic Council and overseeing our chapter accreditation program. Um, so those are the two FSL only. Uh, there is a couple of split roles. There's three of those between FSL and other offices. One is with wellness, so that's currently Lana's position. So uh, Lana works with peer education, outreach, marketing uh, when it comes to wellness. And so trying to help find our uh, next step in that. Uh, University Union, you're doing more with leadership development, hiring, recruiting, educating uh, student staff in the University Union. HRL assessment, as Alex alluded to, that's her position, working with assessment um, within the division or the Department of Housing and Residence Life, but also working as a hall director for us. Um, admissions will be hiring a graduate assistant. This is the first year that they will have a graduate assistant in this type of role. It's more administrative and doing event planning um, so that we're looking forward to working with them. Um, the STEM Scholars Graduate Assistantship is being the basically the administrative graduate support for the STEM scholars program, which is a highly sought after program in the STEM concentration. We have three in housing and residence life. In addition to Alex's position, we have one in multicultural enrichment, working with our cultural connectors uh, in doing some multicultural education and programming. There's one, as Stevens alluded to, the one in student leadership working with um, operations and the housing central office staff. Uh, then there is also a graduate hall director position in housing and residence life. So doing programming, working with student staff in that um, framework. And so that those are available. Um, then we have two positions in student development services, one being Rachel Haley's position. And then another um, is, I think we're building both of them from what I understand the kind of they're building the craft for both positions for next year. So um, be on the inside as you interview that they'll probably frame it for us a little bit um, kind of based off interest, need of the office and that sort of thing. Um, and they currently have five positions in student development services. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Um, How many um, do you all have again? Uh, graduate like yes. you're recruiting for three I believe uh, to, to currently in our structure there's two full-time graduate assistants that work with different programs mm -hmm. again it's being tailored towards our interest um, areas of growth and then also projects that come up through mm -hmm. um, the department there's over 20 22 different staff members in that office so you can have a big breadth of, of experience the other is a split position that works with FSO um, and then it's a part time uh, 10 hour commitment in the student development service department. So the three of us work on different projects, um, but we have kind of our own cohort structure with our supervisor and have a professional development and enrichment in that way. Uh, we'll also have one position in institutional effectiveness. Uh, so it's kind of outside the scope of student affairs, but looking at institutional effectiveness and assessment for the institution as a whole. Uh, and looking at the data. So if you are someone who really desires uh, to work in data analysis or have a strong passion for that area, they are definitely looking for one there. And then also in quality enhancement, uh, again, another assessments data driven type of assistantship uh, to really help ensure uh, the division's efforts. Uh, this one specifically is working as looking at student affairs as it relates to uh, assessment. So those are our frameworks from which we work at the current juncture. <clears throat> um, so kind of as Landon alluded to, for candidates that can't make OPE or um, visiting days one or the other, um, do whatever is most reasonable and most um, easy for you. So if you live in the Midwest or have a plan to already go to OPE, 
then please attend that and uh, interview with us there. But if you aren't able to make that and are able to make our visiting days, we'll welcome you down here as well. Um, as Rachel also said, if you can't make either, we are more than willing to make it work with phone interviews and other things. So just keep in communication with us about um, what works best for you and what ways we can help you to interview for this program. <clears throat> We're going to talk about our experiences, right? <laughs> the fun stuff you want to hear about, what it's like to be a grad student here every day. Um, so I, in this, my second year here in the program, um, I've been fortunate to have a lot of different growth opportunities. One of the core parts for me in looking at the program um, was the GATE experience and this graduate assistant transition program and experience. And um, it was designed with uh, collaborative effort across student affairs. So almost all of our respective employers and supervisors contributed to this program and developed it from the ground up. Um, one interesting facet of our program is that there's other types of programs that will be in your classes. So you may have some from the K through 12 track, counseling track. We have athletic GAs that are a part of that cohort. And so you really learn from a different perspective in the classroom. But GATE takes the role of having that cohort experience of people who are in the student affairs division. Um, We've had a lot of fun. We've done some social events. We um, are working on some opportunities for philanthropic outreach in the local Fort Worth community. Um, but some of our favorite opportunities is learning from our supervisors. Um, we've held mock interviews and resume reviews. We've done practice interviews for internships, uh, as that's a really popular thing for our first year graduate students to, to look into. Um, and then we came back in the second years, got to debrief about where we all went. Uh, we were truly all over the country with very different experiences. And I really valued hearing how we all developed and gained and what we brought back to our own campus and also what we contributed at our internship. Um, by far one of my favorite parts of this program. And I get to see all my friends on a, almost a monthly basis. Um, another favorite part for Stephen and I um, and Alex in the corner there, um, we were had the opportunity to go to study abroad with um, the TCU program. Um, I never got to study abroad in my undergraduate, and that was an opportunity that I was looking for in this experience. And what was unique is that it was tied to higher education, so I couldn't have found a more perfect, I think, alignment of experiences. Um, and I got to go to Oxford for a day, and I loved that. So um, very, very fun opportunity to see the world in higher ed in a very new global perspective. Um, it's definitely in a memory and an experience that I uh, think about often and update my profile picture too frequently. Um, but I also applied it to my learning and my research in the classroom. I think that it influenced the way that I view student affairs and my job in the future. Uh, so I would say my favorite things about TCU's higher ed program, the program specifically and why I kind of chose it. One is Rachel said, I didn't get to study abroad in undergrad. So that presenting the opportunity to study abroad in grad school is not something I thought I was going to get. Uh, so to be able to do that and get college credit for it was fantastic. Um, especially having a nice break from tough second semester of my first year to study abroad to internship. It was a nice little brief period of time where we did get to learn a bunch, but we also got to just explore different cities uh, in the UK. Uh, and I, my other favorite thing is that you get to kind of tailor the classes that you want to take. We have very few mandatory required courses, and you can even substitute some of those that are on the program sheet. And we offer a wide range of different electives. So I know last spring I was one of the only people in my the second year group that took a class on intercollegiate athletics and learning about the NCAA and the intricacies of working with student athletes. And I know a couple of my other peers in here have taken other various classes that I didn't take. Uh, so I think that's another big thing is we offer a ton of different classes. And I know some programs you take the same class with everybody the entire two years that you're there. Uh, but here we're able to take different classes and then meet up and talk about what did you learn in your class. This is what I learned about intercollegiate athletics. Uh, and that's been really beneficial to grow myself as a future higher ed professional. Oh, one other part I forgot too is the opportunity to have two internships. So one being the kind of the summer opportunity, but also an on-campus internship. I know each of the second years have done different ones. Alex did career development, um, Lena did full-time housing, and Steven did his with um, athletic advising. I did mine with care in Title IX, which dealt with sexual assault prevention. Um, so it gave me another network on campus outside of my own office and outside of maybe a different uh, division that I wouldn't have had exposure to that you get credit for. So um, by doing work, you actually get the opportunity to um, kind of two birds, one stone, right? Which we love to see in higher ed, getting it all done at one time. 
I think, and to talk about a little bit about my experience, um, I would echo 100%, like one of my favorite experiences here at TCU is to be able to um, go into different offices, have those resources. I feel like I know a lot of people in different offices because of that. Um, I, like Rachel had said, I interned in housing and residence life last semester. I got to help create like a housekeeping um, curriculum. So that's something I really like. I like the facilitating aspect and um, to really develop a little bit more of a customer service aspect on that was really cool. Um, and then I also got to do a summer internship. I didn't get to go study abroad with my fellow peers. Um, I wanted the opportunity to um, go to New York City. So um, that was kind of an area that I was looking for. So I went through a Kuwai, um, ended up working in the in a housing operations um, area in the heart of New York City. And it was great. Um, it was the experience I chose. I studied abroad in my undergrad, so um, it was a sacrifice I was willing to make, but I think sometimes I highly, rec I highly recommend to everybody that comes to the program to study abroad. Um, and then this semester, I actually am helping out and working in our conduct office. And so um, I'll be able to do a little bit more of like our Cleary Act, um, doing a little bit more statistics in that. And so um, to be able to really do those experiences has been phenomenal. Mm -hmm. And um, I think you are only limited to the opportunities you don't take. And so um, that's something that I encourage everybody to do. And so TCU has been great in the fact that um, I feel like I have a really well-rounded experience going into my job search here in the next couple weeks and months. And so, um, yeah, very thankful for those opportunities. So kind of on the front end of that spectrum, um, I'm a first year, so I haven't had all these experiences, <laughs> that, which I'm looking forward to, obviously. Um, but I still have the ability to collaborate with other offices, which I think is fantastic and something that TCU really does well. Um, Steven's my supervisor. I've talked to him, hey, I really want this experience and we've worked it out. I work with a committee for uh, housing residence life, even though that's not my assistantship. So getting those other opportunities outside of your required um, internships is one that TCU does really well. Um, within the classroom, I think one of my favorite things is that while it's a cohort ish model um, we still have students who are doctoral students or who are in other programs like counseling or in our classes kind of giving us those different uh, viewpoints so the director of housing was in my class last semester it was so cool to hear all of his experiences and his different viewpoints from ours and different age groups um, so having just that opportunity to uh, collaborate and work with students who aren't don't have my same um, eyesight and viewpoint. So I think that's something that TCU really does really well. Yeah, and just to preface, um, if you are looking to go into this program um, and get an assistantship through TCU, um, we are only, um, honestly, uh, very transparently, we are only accepting people who apply to our higher education leadership program at this time. And so I know a lot of people are like, oh, I want to do counseling, I want to do this track. We are condensing both of the counseling student affairs track with the higher ed program. So you will be taking counseling classes, um, but in order to get like the full effect of um, the higher education experience um, at this time, we are only doing that track. And so um, definitely apply. I highly recommend it if you apply to the wrong program um, on accident, which has happened in the past. I very that has happened already this year. Um, definitely send us an email. I'll connect you with the right people. Um, any of us are willing to help you, but at this time, that is the only program that we are encouraging you to apply to to receive one of our assistantships. Yeah. So with that, let's turn it over <laughs> to you all. I know that we've talked at you. It's time for you to ask what the burning questions of us. Yeah. So put yeah. us in the hot seats. Ask your questions. Um, uh, first, God, God. exactly. exactly. Yeah. It does evolve every year. We've changed locations. So um, I know for our trip, we went specifically to um, England. We saw um, two to three different institutions there. Um, I saw another because I was really jazzed and went to King's <laughs> College because I'm a nerd. Um, and I, we went to Scotland and saw the University of Edinburgh, which was one of our absolute favorites. We went to Northern and Southern Ireland, which is unique if you don't know much about um, Ireland. Uh, they're very different subcultures, and we had the chance to go to Trinity College, which is one of the premier leading institutions um, in the globe, um, after, of course, um, the ever faithful Oxford and Cambridge. Uh, and then we got to see Queen's Belfast, uh, which was one of 
by far one of my favorite. It surprised me in a lot of ways, learning the culture, history, and how um, really religion has shifted the way that education is accessible. So we went and did that. We saw a lot of different other sites. Um, Stephen is a big Game of Thrones guy. The series finale was happening while we were overseas. Um, and we took a tour. I knew nothing about it. And it was fabulous still for me. The Giants Causeway was breathtaking. Um, so, and this year I know they'll be going to different locations and Ben can teach you or tell you a little bit more about those. Uh, actually, we have our meeting next Tuesday. So <laughs> I will be learning Coming about soon. those. Uh, <laughs> for sure going to England, that's where uh, I was told to land my flight. So. Um, that's as much as I know. If you want to know more, feel free to email me next Tuesday. I'll give you the schedule. Do y'all have any other questions? I have one. Yeah. If, okay. Um, so I'm from Michigan. I went to Central Michigan University, um, which is great, but it's just a college in the middle of a bunch of cornfields. Um, and the whole city is built around the fact that there's a college. So um, I know Texas Christian's a little bit different. So what do you think are unique opportunities that you have because of where you're located? So so I will tell you, uh, I've been at TCU for in February would be one year. Uh, one of the things that I think is fascinating for this experience for you all is the fact that um, Dallas, Fort Worth is the Metroplex, and the fact that there are so many experiences and conferences that come to the Metroplex. Um, I think it's unique the fact that like a lot of people may have to go very far to get training in education and learning, whereas we can just go to Dallas. A lot of things are hosted in Dallas or in Fort Worth because of the convention center downtown, and so I think it's unique that you have that ability. I think the other piece that uh, is helpful and this is a TCU thing is the funding that's provided for professional development to aid you in that process um, so that you're able to take advantage of those experiences. It may look different from office to office, however, um, knowing that that is a unique thing and there are not a lot of uh, graduate schools that their departments are the ones that house the professional development funds for graduate students. Many times it's the College of Education that looks different here. Um, those are two of the initial things that I think about. I think culturally Fort Worth is an interesting city to be. Um, uh, I think that the more you learn about the Fort Worth area from a, a grassroots level, the more you understand maybe um, the, the history and context of where TCU fits into that and how we're working as a community to advance that on a civic engagement level um, and a community partnership kind of a capacity. Um, but I am fascinated with uh, the food here is incredible. I'm a big foodie. So anywhere I was looking at a graduate school had to have um, really a diverse opportunity for that um, close to an airport so if you need to get home I know you're in central Michigan I don't know if you're if that's your hometown um, but you're able to commute and get at, back into wherever you want to um, also a good opportunity to network with other graduate students um, I've had a chance to collaborate with students from A&M from Baylor and from SMU and the opportunity just to hear about where we all are at and what we're receiving is, is really interesting in just the state um, within like an hour and a half radius. So I think that's what makes TCU really unique in the Fort Worth area. Kind of adding on to what Rachel said, um, something the first year my cohort has kind of competed for is finding the best new place for each other. Um, and I think about every other weekend we find a new place to eat, to go to happy hour, to hang out and do something. Um, and we've continuously found something new. And so we're about in nine months or eight months, uh, probably like seven months. Yeah. But we, like I said, we still found a lot of new things to do in that time. Um, and we haven't ran out. We haven't even made it to Dallas yet. So we're still just in the city of Fort Worth. We have Arlington and Dallas to still key in on. Um, and maybe that's what we'll do next year. And also, our we have the same availability to resources that our undergraduate students have. So we have free access to the gym here on campus. Um, discounted events, there's concerts that come here routinely, large, um, heavy hitting names um, will be here. And a lot of events culturally, uh, the tree lighting is by far, I think some of our favorites. Uh, a bunch of us are planning to go to the stockyards here. So you, it, before you judge the South, let the South embrace you, you know? Um, so go see the stockyards. 
um, it's it's an interesting place, and I think uh, other components uh, we really cherish are being a part of the community in that way and experiencing uh, TCU life with our students. Um, we have discount tickets to Rangers games in the past. Mm -hmm. They show movies that here for nice. free on the weekends as well. Knives Out is coming up, so um, they keep it interesting. I think a big thing for me too is I grew up. I'm in Iowa. I loved it, um, but I I think I was looking for a bigger city experience, and so DFW is a great place to start. Um, and it's just been really cool. I think I'm never bored. I can always go somewhere. I can always do something. We're close to movie theaters. I know Stephen goes to movies all the time. Always a highly. Um, I always am envious of the fact that I get to go and do all the things that maybe I wouldn't have done in my undergrad experience. I grew up in like a cornfield, like. That's where I, yeah, not in a cornfield, but um, yeah, I grew up like going to a school that was in the middle of nowhere and I loved it, but I don't think I could ever go back. And so I think in higher education, especially our students are from everywhere. And so that's probably one of my favorite things is I get to ask them um, what is like the best place to go and eat. Um, I learn things from them. Um, and then probably the fact that an airport is really close. Um, I like to travel a lot and that's probably one of my non-negotiables going forward is I need to be close to an airport so I can get to the places I want to go, even though DFW is great and we get to do stuff here every weekend. I will also say US News and World Report ranks DFW in the top 10 <laughs> for places for young professionals to move to get us started with their careers. So I will just put that out there. I promise I did a lot of extensive <laughs> research last year on that. So um, yeah. What other questions do you have? Um, I have another one. How many people generally apply to the program versus how many are accepted? So it really depends. I think this year, so I'll be very transparent in this. This year is the first year that we have established more of a framework for this. This is also the first year that they have a dedicated staff member in the new framework of how we are doing graduate recruitment. Um, so a lot of things have shifted. Um, so I would want to say that last year I could give you a definitive number of how many applied versus how many accepted. I will say that I anticipate that we will probably have roughly 50 to 60 candidates that will apply for positions anywhere from 15 to 20. Why I say 20 is because there are graduate assistantships in athletics that take advantage of the higher ed leadership program that they are not in the recruitment track with us. Um, so I, I want to be transparent in that. Um, and then there's also going to be people in the program that may be working full time at TCU taking advantage of that um, education benefit that we have. And so uh, recognizing that that will occur as well. Um, so obviously we'll say with the say that roughly the 15 that are based off of the assistantship, but there are probably maybe more based off of who applies and where they're coming from. And just to preface, um, we cannot offer you uh, like an assistantship unless you've applied to the program. And so I think that's huge when you're going to OP. So um, if you have or haven't applied, um, definitely look into doing that before you meet us at OP. Um, the deadline is March 1st. And so um, I think that's just a big one is we want serious candidates who want to be here. And so um, we're starting to kind of enforce that a little bit more. I will also tell you that um, we will be able to identify for you whether or not you will likely be admitted into the program if you choose to come to visiting days before you get here. Um, so that is a new piece to this is that we want to be upfront and transparent with you. That's the reason why we have a two week window in between admissions deadline and the start of the program so that we can communicate some of those elements before um, you sit down in front of your first your first interview with if you come to visiting days. OP is a little different because we'll interview on the front end and uh, fall in love with you and pray and show you how to, well, not pray with you, but pray <laughs> that you apply, but also sit down and we'll have a computer for you to apply if you haven't already applied for the program. And definitely, like, I highly recommend if you're looking at coming to campus. I know I never came to campus before I accepted. I first time I came to campus was my first day, really, that weekend before. And so um, don't be nervous, but we highly recommend that you come to visiting days. You'll get to meet everyone. And so um, only, uh, unfortunately, like, we can only send a few people up to Wisconsin. It's kind of cold and kind of far. And so <laughs> it's like a little cold. Um, but um, I highly recommend, like, if you're 
serious about us, we're wanting to have you on campus. And so keep that in mind. Those dates are big. Um, we want to make it possible for you all. And um, our logistics team, like three of the, like five people, yeah. three of the five people are in here. And so um, it's really great. They're the ones who are going to be working, you know, behind the scenes, contacting you and really making sure your visit's the best one. Um, be on the lookout here in the next week or so. We're finalizing all of our logistics. And so um, we will be sending out some pretty important stuff. If you are interested in coming to campus, um, you'll need to fill that out. We'll start really making reservations. Your flight is not covered, unfortunately, but uh, start planning now. We can we can really assist you in how to get from here to the airport, or TCU, or the airport to TCU. And so um, just be on the lookout from us with an email on that if you're seriously considering coming to TCU. And if you're at OPE and you're like, yeah, I love you, um, y'all are great, um, that'll be a different conversation, but kind of the same. But yeah, definitely. Okay. Final thoughts before we wrap up for today? I had another question for you. Right. Yeah. Uh, I was wondering what opportunities there are to learn about diversity and inclusion, both in the classroom and outside of the classroom. Absolutely. So one of the unique things is that the pedagogy related to the program, one of the facts is that um, there's a lot of integration with diversity, equity, and inclusion in some of the coursework that you'll be taking. So you'll see that there'll be opportunities for you to complement your education with courses that are provided or offered to you. I think the other thing to find out about TCU is the framework of social justice that's infused into the institution from its cultural makeup um, for pretty much the entire extent of its existence. Um, and figuring out how to continue to see that in just in the programs that we offer at TCU. TCU recently was highlighted for its diversity, equity, and inclusion efforts. Um, and so you'll probably see a multitude of programs throughout your time at TCU, whether on campus, um, in the College of Education, for professional development. Um, you'll see it in multifaceted ways, um, not only for you to learn, but also to engage in those conversations and potentially also to help participate and evolve those conversations as a graduate student. Some of the other experiences like programmatically, I know that our, um, the hall directors are trained on intentional dialogues, which was a program created out of student development services and it helps to teach our undergraduate students, staff um, and faculty about how to have critical conversations around inclusion, um, diversity and those kind of really topics that can be controversial or just uncomfortable for some populations. And so um, it's an opportunity for you to also I'll be trained in intentional dialogues as kind of part of my assistantship. So there's ways for you to kind of get those other opportunities to have those touch points. Um, I also encourage reaching out to those individuals once you're in an assistantship because there's lots of opportunities for you to kind of tap in and volunteer and kind of work on maybe projects um, outside of just your assistantship to really learn and grasp what those um, what contextually TCU is trying to really, I think, achieve from those kind of core perspectives. Something that we touched on a little earlier is um, TCU has a pretty good budget for professional development. So whether you feel like you're getting that type of diversity training within your own um, assistantship or not, you can always search elsewhere and TCU will, can help cover some of the charges. So whether that be a conference um, over diversity inclusion in some way, um, there are always opportunities within the field and there's professional staff here and there's also whatever second years will, will be uh, with you that know about these that can help you find them those opportunities and work through those. Or even buying like a webinar from NASPA they put on lots of programs and we did like a brown bag lunch and sat in and like one person purchased from our department for the professional development and we all sat around together and like could have dialogue and um, so I mean we, we try to give you that holistic perspective of like national associations to get you involved as well which I appreciate and also giving you a chance to interact with other maybe universities that are doing it bigger and better and that we want to maybe replicate too. Do y'all have any other questions? Um, we can talk a little bit before we end the webinar about um, kind of like benefits and why you should choose TCU. Um, I know for us, um, it's kind of publicized everywhere. So if you don't already know, um, we have a pretty great uh, package. Um, I think it's one of the best. So let me know if you have seen the others. But 
Um, it's a really great package, and I think um, it definitely helps when you're looking at graduate schools. Um, if you do obtain an assistantship here at TCU, um, your tuition is covered, as well as um, typically you get a $16,000 stipend. Um, on top of that, if you are selected for a housing and residence life position in some capacity, um, there are some that may be a little bit different, but housing and residence life or FSL housing, um, you do get an apartment, a, full, a fully furnished apartment, as well as a meal plan. Um, and then, what am I forgetting? Oh, parking. Um, so definitely a great deal. Um, and I have really enjoyed it. Like I said, I came in with no residence life experience and it, it, they taught me well. I started in J or July and so um, definitely know that that is one part of it. And for those of you who live off campus, um, I'll let you talk about that if that's okay. Sure. Because um, I think there is a really great places to live and sometimes, you know, those off campus positions are, uh, I think, they're pros and cons. Like, yes, I'm on campus all the time, but sometimes I don't get to go home. and so. I'd love for you to touch on that. <laughs> sure. um, I, being full time, I don't have a residential go, like live in role here at TCU, and so I live off campus in the local area. Um, I really enjoy that. It gives me that degree of separation that um, is really important for me to be at my best and really balance um, self care, which is a practice you'll get really good at if you're not in the, in this higher ed program. Um, and so there's lots of apartments in the area, but if you're looking and that's something that you know you're wanting to kind of have as part of your experience, I'm happy to connect with. You. Um, I actually have met all of my roommates uh, through the program. I've had two different roommates, all of which have been in the higher ed program. So um, it gives me that sense of community actually that's not available if you just live independently. And I really have appreciated that. Um, in each kind of phase of my, my years here, I lived with a second year previously, and now I'm a second year living with a first year. And it's really great as she's going through the interview search process and has questions similar like when I was uh, first year last year and just would come home and need that space to be able to say, you know, it's been a hard day. Let's just have um, let's have that moment together. Um, so I really appreciated that. Um, and I'm not far from campus as well. So I'm still accessible and really close to things that I value and close to my people so I can go visit them on campus as well. Um, you're never too far from anything in the kind of surrounding TCU area. Do y'all want to talk about like why you picked TCU? I know we kind of touched on that, but like why you should? Yeah, um, <laughs> sorry. Um, I was interested in moving to Texas for a while, but I, I will admit TCU probably was on the top of my radar or my list um, until I went to OPE, um, met two fantastic people there and interviewed well. Um, and then I came to campus and as soon as I stepped off a foot on campus, I just felt at home. Um, there's very much a family feel here from the students to the faculty. Uh, if they notice that you're lost, they try to help you as much as possible. So um, the environment around TCU and on the college campus was something that really was important to me. Um, it's what brought me to my undergraduate and what brought me here. Just that family feel that I'm important and uh, people like, accept me here. Uh, aside, I know I said earlier the study abroad was one of the main things that brought me here, but just to be super transparent, our financial package was one of the biggest draws for me. The other institutions that I would have had an opportunity to attend uh, couldn't even touch what we offer here at TCU, so it made my choice a lot easier because I needed some financial assistance uh, and TCU was able to grant me that. Uh, so with that and study abroad were kind of the two big markers of coming down to Texas. Never thought I'd end up in Texas but uh, it's been a fantastic time so far. Um, I actually worked professionally before coming back to get my master's. So um, I call it like the non-traditional path, but there's really no traditional path in higher ed. So, um, but what I really valued is I wanted a big 12 school. I wanted to be a part of that big campus life experience and see what it was like um, and take advantage of the perks too. Um, you know, we get to go to football games, basketball games, any type of event for free. Um, and having less financial burden is really important when you're going back and getting an advanced degree. Um, so I, I know what that is looking like and when you're kind of evaluating cost first benefit. Um, but the reward of being a TCU graduate student is immeasurable for me. Um, this experience has enriched me personally. Um, I have a network of, of professionals at my disposal that I can ask questions to and just be really honest with about where I am. And I really value that. Um, not every campus, I think, emulates that type of culture. And I'm very lucky to be a part of it and contribute to it and, and really benefit from it. So 
Uh, my why for being here is the same reason my why for staying here. Definitely. And for me, I think I, we've kind of touched on all of the things, but I think my biggest thing is TC really rolls out like the purple carpet for each student and each staff member. Um, it was ranked one of the best places to work. And so um, I think that really shows how well we treat um, each person that comes onto our campus. Um, and I really love the fact that I get to um, ask for opportunities and typically and most usually I'm always granted some capacity of what I am looking for in my professional development. Um, I feel fully capable that I'm going to get a great job and so um, I have TC to thank for that. And obviously the package is just phenomenal. And so um, I know I couldn't have gone to school without a good package. And um, that is something that um, I'm very grateful for as I continue my search into the next direction for sure. So I'm going to say that why I do what I do is I enjoy working to enhance the graduate student experience for students. Like, I believe in the power of the graduate student experience from the developmental side and that if we can enrich them as a graduate student, we will help prepare them for the professional realms that they're walking into in higher education. Um, I have a unique opportunity, the fact that I supervise the most graduate students in the division each year, whether this year it's six and next year it will be five. Um, and so having the opportunity to work with graduate graduate students, not only from the recruitment side, but also to help supervise and mentor graduate students when they arrive um, is pretty remarkable. So for some of you that may be hanging out with us today, some of you may end up working with us next year and uh, have me as a supervisor and know I care immensely about your experience um, and want to make sure that you have a positive, productive experience that is long lasting and will help enrich higher education as an industry. With that being said, we really appreciate you taking the time to meet with us today. And we look forward to seeing your materials, your application, and more uh, as we continue to move forward. Again, our deadline for applications are March 1st. If we see you at visiting days or OPE, we look forward to connecting with you there. If you need to schedule a different time, please let us know. We look forward to just making the time to be amongst us and with you as you come to learn more about the Horn Frog family. Yeah, and if you want to talk to any of the people who are here today, um, most of you have either my email or Markel's, um, and I believe one of us shot you an email or even Alex's. Um, just send us an email and be like, hey, I want to hear a little bit more about Rachel's position. Like, what does that look like? Or Stevens, when, you know, he's doing the transition over, um, he's helping, I'm sure you're helping kind of advance what the position next year is going to look like. Um, ben as a full-time FSL or even a split um, like myself or Alex. So um, if you need anything, like please send us an email. Um, we're here for you or resources. I can connect you to anybody in the department um, or anybody at our institution.